Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed for a video about high-end CPUs. You know, the 8-core ones that prior to March 2017 nobody could actually afford, but now kind of can. Yeah, so previously, as in five months ago, if you wanted an 8-core 16-thread CPU, you'd pretty much have to refinance your home. The temptation, though, was just so great that many did. Of course, they all wanted the Core i7-6950X, but with interest rates the way they are, they had to settle for the piddly little 6900K. So the point I'm trying to make here is that previously Intel's eight core CPUs were stupidly overpriced, but now we have the Core i7-7820X and it's less stupidly overpriced. Uh, the reason Intel's high-end desktop platform pricing has smartened up a little bit is of course due to Ryzen 7. Uh, the eight core 16 thread R7 1700 in particular was introduced back in March at an unbelievable MSRP of $330 US. And if that wasn't hard enough to believe, it can be purchased online for as little as $290 US today. Intel's response to Ryzen was the Core X range, and that includes the Core i7-7820X. Though, I'm not quite sure anyone at Intel actually understands how pricing works. I mean, they obviously get that money is good, um, and that they want more of it. So I guess that explains why the new 8-core model comes in at $600 US. Uh, I guess in their defense, they probably think at that price, they're basically giving them away. Okay, guys, that's probably the most sarcastic intro I've ever done. It's at least top five material. Uh, but it's really hard to take this comparison seriously when one CPU has an MSRP of $600 uh, and is currently retailing for $680, while the other has an MSRP of $330 and is currently selling for $290. And on paper, they are quite similar. The cheaper CPU can also be paired happily with a $100 motherboard, while the more expensive CPU requires a $220 plus motherboard. So it's pretty clear AMD's Ryzen 7 1700 is significantly cheaper than Intel's Core i7-7820X, and yet they both pack eight cores with 16 threads. What I wanna know is just how much better is Intel's offering? We've already done a lot of Ryzen and Core X testing here at Harbor Unboxed, so we have a pretty good idea of how these CPUs compare. That said, I wanted to run some additional tests, and initially this video was going to be one of those for science type deals where the information is kind of pointless for your average consumer, but it looks into something most other benchmarks don't. What I wanted to see was how the Skylake X-based Core i7-7820X compared to the Broadwell E6900K clock for clock at 4GHz using the same DDR4-2666 memory. I then thought, well, you guys are going to want to see Ryzen 7 in the mix, so I tested the 1700 at 4GHz using DDR4-2666 memory. Then I thought, the AMD fanboys won't like that too much, even if we are doing it in the name of science. I'll get things like, Steve, Ryzen scale is better than Intel with high frequency memory. You're handicapping Ryzen to make Intel look good. Unsubbed. So then I thought, in addition to testing Ryzen at 4GHz using DDR4-2666 memory, I would also retest using DDR4-3200 memory, and then everyone would be happy, right? Mm, no, because now we're showing Ryzen at its maximum overclock using high-frequency memory, while the 7820X is limited to 4GHz with 2666 memory. So I retested the 7820X at 4.5 GHz using DDR4-3200 memory with the mesh also overclocked to 3 GHz. By this point, I was heavily sleep deprived, but the testing was done. So I moved on to write a coherent and to the point introduction, you know, no more than say a minute. Looking back, I'll admit things got a bit away from me here, but the good news is we do now have 19 graphs and six CPU configurations to check out, so the real fun is just about to begin. Rather than start with the productivity benchmarks, we're gonna skip to the dessert. For this video, we're starting with the game benchmarks. Consider it me trying to make amends for that intro. First up, let me explain a bit about what's going on here with all these foreign looking yellow bars. The three yellow bars at the bottom represent the Ryzen 7 1700, Core i7-6900K and Core i7-7820X, all clocked at 4GHz using DDR4-2666 memory. The two sets of blue bars compare the R7-1700 and i7-7820X, again at 4GHz but this time with DDR4-3200 memory. 
Then the golden bars at the top. These are showcasing the i7-7820X in all of its glory at 4.5 GHz using DDR4-3200 memory with the mesh interconnect overclocked to 3 GHz. So, you got all that? Good, let's jump into it. The results that you've been staring at while I explained my color coding is Battlefield 1. And for the graphics card, we have the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti. Looking at the apples to apples results, those yellow bars, we see that the 1600K is a few percent faster than the new 7820X in this title. Meanwhile, the 7820X is just 13% faster than the Ryzen 7 1700. Now, what's interesting to note here, and we did see this in our 30 game benchmark comparison recently using the Ryzen 5 1600 and Core i7 7800X, is that once we up the memory speed, the R7 1700 is able to roughly match the 7820X. In fact, the increased memory speed really does nothing for the Intel CPU in this game. The 7820X is now just 2% faster when comparing the minimum frame rate. Winding Intel's 8-core CPU right up doesn't really help that much either. At 4.5 GHz, the 7820X is now just 3% faster than the humble R7 1700. Civilization 6 is a game where Ryzen has in the past looked quite poor in relation to Intel's quad-core offerings such as the 7700K and even to this day looks a little bit sluggish. However, throw the Core X range into the mix and Ryzen starts to look like a bit of alright. Clock for clock with the slower 2666 memory, Ryzen was 11% faster than the 7820X, though shockingly 14% slower than the 6900K. Increasing the memory frequency to 3200 boosted the 7820X performance by a whopping 17%, though less whopping when compared to the R7 1700's almost 30% performance increase. We're only seeing a 20% boost in memory frequency here, so the 2666 speed must have been imposing a serious bottleneck for Ryzen. Overclocking the 7820X to 4.5 GHz helped to extract a further 11% performance, but even so still trailed the R7 1700 by a 9% margin. In our 30 game benchmark, Civilization 6 provided the 7800X with one of its worst results against the R5 1600, so let's move on to see how things look in F1 2016. Well, things do look much more competitive here. Looking at the DDR4 2666 numbers, we do yet again find the 6900K is actually faster than the 7820X when match clock for clock. The 7820X was also just 6% faster than the R7 1700 when looking at the minimum frame rate. Upping the memory frequency to 3200 once again does little to nothing for the 7820X. The gains for Ryzen weren't huge here either, but it was enough to see the R7 1700 roughly match the new Intel 8-core CPU. That said, squeezing a bit more from the 7820X did place it firmly ahead of the R7 1700 by around a 6% margin. Moving on, we have Far Cry Primal, which might seem like an odd choice given it's not that well optimized for high core count CPUs, but it often delivers interesting results, so I thought it was worth a look. Here we see when using the DDR4-2666 memory that the 7820X is 13% slower than the 6900K, and that's obviously a pretty significant margin. It was still 8% faster than the R7-1700 though, at least when looking at the average frame rate. Moving to DDR4-3200, we see that the faster memory boosts the minimum frame rate of the 7820X by a 5% margin, while the R7-1700 enjoyed a 10% boost. The Ryzen CPU was now 8% faster when comparing the minimum frame rate, and a few frames faster for the average. That said, once we give the 7800X all she's got, it's able to boost the minimum frame rate by a further 11%, allowing it to once again overtake the R7-1700. Next up we have Hitman, and this is yet another game where the older Core i7-6900K slays both the Ryzen 7 1700 and Core i7-7820X when match clock for clock. The R7-1700 also makes out quite poorly with the DDR4-2666 memory as it was 10% slower than the 7820X and around 17% slower than the 6900K when comparing the minimum frame rate. Increasing the memory speed to 3200 didn't do much for the 7820X, and we've seen this quite a bit already. The R7-1700 on the other hand enjoyed a 13% jump in the minimum frame rate and a 15% increase for the average, so it's not far behind the 7820X now. That said though, turning up the heat further with the Core i7-7820X at 4.5GHz helped to improve performance by a further 8%, and now the Intel CPU is comfortably faster than the R7-1700.
Finally, we have Total War Warhammer, and this is a title that has been well optimized to take advantage of Ryzen through a few handy updates. As you can see, even with DDR4 2666 memory, the Ryzen CPU is able to lay waste to not just the 7820X, but also the 6900K in this title. It's also worth noting that the Broadwell E CPU was again faster than Intel's new 7820X, delivering an 8% greater minimum frame rate. Upgrading the DDR4 3200 did improve the 7820X's minimum frame rate result by 10%, which is decent, though the R7 1700 did see a massive 16% performance bump here. In fact, even at 4.5GHz with a 3GHz mesh overclock, the 7820X was still slightly slower than the R7 1700 in this title. Moving on from the gaming benchmarks, I have a few synthetic and application benchmarks to look at before checking out memory performance and then the power consumption. Cinebench R15 is good for measuring raw CPU performance, and here memory performance has a little impact. Interestingly, the Core i7-7820X is faster than the 6900K when matched clock for clock, albeit just 4% faster. When it comes to multi-thread performance, the Ryzen 7 1700 and 7820X are on par, though the Intel CPU does enjoy a 5% advantage in the single-threaded scenarios. Overclocked to 4.5GHz, the 7820X naturally pulls ahead and can now be seen achieving a score of just over 1900 points. Next up we have some compression and decompression performance with 7-Zip. From what I've gathered, Ryzen's SMT feature helps massively with decompression work but isn't utilized for compression. I haven't looked into this properly yet, it's just a theory, but in the case of Ryzen, it is worlds better at decompression than it is compression, which for most users is fine as most do significantly more decompression work anyway. Clock for clock, the 6900K and 7820X are very similar in this test, while Ryzen was noticeably faster for the decompression test, but significantly slower for the compression test. Interestingly, like what we did see quite a few times in the gaming benchmarks, increasing the memory speed did help Ryzen quite a bit, but had very little impact on the 7820X. Overclocked to 4.5 GHz, the 7820X took a good step forwards and is now able to match the decompression performance of Ryzen. The Blender render test is measured in seconds, so lower is better here. Memory frequency also has little to no impact on performance, so this didn't help Ryzen close the gap on the Intel CPUs when using the DDR4 3200 memory. Ryzen was 8% slower than the 7820X in this test when compared clock for clock, and 23% slower once the 7820X was overclocked to the max at its 4.5 GHz frequency, so a pretty solid win for Intel here. We find a similar story when testing with Corona. The 7820X is a little bit faster than the 6900K and a lot faster than the R7-1700. With both CPUs overclocked to the max, the 7820X was 16% faster. Of course, it does cost more than twice as much, so technically not a win in terms of price versus performance. Before we get to the power consumption figures, here's a quick look at the Ida64 cache and memory benchmark results. There are a few graphs to get through, but we'll blow through them pretty quickly. Here we see that Ryzen's dual channel memory controller is quite limiting in terms of bandwidth compared to the Broadwell E and Skylake X CPUs which use a quad channel memory controller. Whereas the 7820X can push 66 gigabytes per second for the read throughput, the R7-1700 was limited to just 40 gigabytes per second. Meanwhile, once overclocked, the 7820X hums along to the tune of 81 gigabytes per second which is obviously quite mega. What's interesting to note though is that the Core i7-6900K is significantly better than both the R7-1700 and 7800X when it comes to memory latency. Ryzen does improve with higher clocked memory, as does the 7820X, but I guess that's to be expected. Ryzen is well down when looking at the level 1 cache throughput. It's basically half that of the Intel CPUs. That said though, while down on bandwidth, the latency performance is much the same. Ryzen's level 2 cache performance is excellent, smashing the 6900K clock for clock and even beating the 7820X. Overclocked, the 7820X does pull ahead, but even so, Ryzen is still very strong here. Although throughput overall was weaker, the 6900K's level 2 cache offers very low latency. Ryzen's also quite good here, while the delay for the 7820X is quite extreme, that is until we overclock the CPU. When compared to the 6900K, the R7-1700's level 3 cache throughput looks excellent. However, when compared to the 7820X, it does look quite weak indeed. However, throughput isn't everything, and here we see that despite the big bandwidth, the latency is still very poor for the 7820X, even once overclocked. So in terms of responsiveness, Ryzen has a big advantage here.
Since memory frequency has little to no impact on the overall system consumption, I've only looked at the DDR4-2666 figures here, along with the 4.5GHz overclock for the 7820X. Clock for clock, the Core i7-6900K was very efficient, pushing total system consumption at just 206 watts in Cinebench R15 multi-threaded. The Ryzen 7 1700 did do quite well, drawing just 248 watts, while the 7820X was quite a bit hungrier, hitting 268 watts. However, it was once overclocked that the 7820X increased total system consumption by 26%, and is now seen consuming 36% more power than the R7 1700, a pretty significant figure indeed. Well then, there's some very interesting things to discuss here. Let's start with the Core i7-6900K and 7820X comparison. It was quite shocking to find that when compared clock for clock using the same speed memory, that the older 6900K was faster in every single game we tested, and at times was significantly faster, like what we saw with Civilization VI. Even giving the 7820X an advantage of the faster DDR4-3200 memory, which the 6900K doesn't actually support, it was rare that the Skylake X CPU would hit the lead. Even overclocked to 4.5GHz with the 3GHz mesh frequency overclock, the 7820X was only able to match the 6900K in most of the titles tested, and realistically, we could go ahead and squeeze a few hundred megahertz more out of the Broadwell eCPU. Adding insult to injury is the fact that the 7820X consumes significantly more power to deliver similar performance of the previous generation part. For that 4.5 gigahertz overclock, you will require a seriously high-end liquid-cooled solution if you want to avoid heavy throttling. When it came to application performance, the 7820X did look much better, though even then it wasn't always clearly superior to the 6900K. For example, we saw similar performance in the 7-zip application, while the Cinebench R15 numbers weren't drastically different either. The 7820X was marginally better in the Blender and Corona tests, but not to the degree where you'd find yourself that excited about the results. The only advantage the 7820X really has over the 6900K is the fact that it's cheaper, around 35% cheaper, which is obviously a big deal. That said, if you gave me the choice of either of these CPUs at the same price, I'd probably take the 6900K. Moving on to the 7820X versus R7-1700 comparison, it's pretty clear that in terms of value, the Ryzen 7 CPU is in a different league. I really don't think even the most loyal Intel fanboy could argue otherwise, and as always, I'm not sure why they'd bother anyway. Once you factor in things like the motherboard cost to the equation, the 7820X costs around 130% more than the R7-1700. Needless to say, it was never anywhere near that much faster. Comparing the maximum overclocked gaming performance results, uh, it really was pretty similar experience overall. The 7820X, for example, it enjoyed a decent win in Hitman, though the R7-1700 was noticeably better in Civilization VI. And yeah, as I said, the rest was really much of a muchness. The 7820X was 23% faster in Blender and 16% faster for the Corona benchmark. So it was hands down faster for these productivity workloads. Uh, but yeah, keep in mind, it wasn't 130% faster. And for that extra performance, it did consume 36% more power. So also keep that in mind. In the end, I feel like the Skylake X architecture is at best a sidestep from Broadwell E, and this has afforded Ryzen a great deal of breathing room. Had Intel been the slightest bit aggressive with their pricing, then Ryzen would have a serious fight on its hands, but as it stands at $600-ish, you'd be mad to spend that kind of money on the 7820X when you can get comparable performance for less than half that price. And... That's where I'm going to leave this comparison. If you like this video, we'll go ahead and make it official, even share the video. And of course, don't forget to subscribe as I do have a heap more benchmark content coming up on the channel very soon. I'm your host, Steve. See you again soon, guys.